Good evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You at Christmas, a very special edition filled with festive fibs. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a BAFTA-nominated actress whose first job was in a sandwich shop. Well, it did allow her time to work on her roles. It's Kerry Howard. Oh, beautiful. And a legendary cricket commentator who is so posh, he makes David sound common. It's Henry Blofeld. <laughs> And on Lee Mack's team tonight, a BBC news journalist who's reported from war zones and trouble spots in over 80 countries. It's a dangerous job, but think of the air miles. It's Clive Myrie. <laughs> and a vicar who once performed the number one song, Don't Leave Me This Way. What a funeral that was. <laughs> it's the Reverend Richard Coles. And so we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panellists each read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before. They have no idea what they'll be faced with. It's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. And we start with Richard. In our family, whoever was deemed to have done the worst mime in the Christmas game of charades had to stand up and have their finger nibbled by our pet tortoise. <laughs> David Steen. What was the tortoise called? Aldwinkle. Why was he called Aldwinkle? Because that was the name of the place we got him, the village of Aldwinkle. How did it start? It must have been my father. It has his stamp upon it. I don't really remember. It was just something we always did, and it seemed perfectly normal to us. What was it about your father's finger? It wasn't my father's finger. <laughs> it just... <laughs> He rather liked the sort of traditional aspects of Christmas and, uh, and liked to follow these things. Well, that's not one of them. <laughs> that's an invention. I mean, there are other already. There are some off-the-shelf traditions you could have used. Yeah. Well, I think Mince little... pies, carols, oh, yeah. turkey or goose, that kind of thing. He was sprinkled with a little artificial snow to make him seasonal, but nonetheless... That's what <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a great time of year for Aldwinkle. I think he was probably bewildered by the entire process, but nonetheless, that was what we did. Of course, as I'd forgotten, but you've reminded me, they hibernate. Well... <laughs> <laughs> that's, exactly, that's exactly true, but hibernation can be an interrupted affair. Ooh. But... I you've got your information right here. Yeah? No, they don't, but they're not. All the kids at home. Wake up, the tortoise is fine! The Reverend Richard Carlson... <laughs> yeah. Let's go and dig up Nam! I will... <laughs> I will concede, Aldwinkle was not at his liveliest. He was a bit more vital, I have to say, vigorous in the summer months. Well, this is the thing that worries me, because I think waking a tortoise... I mean, uh, can you wake why, yeah. Waking yeah. any animal from hibernation can cause uh, problems, so let's not do that, kids, uh, whether this is truth or a lie. <laughs> OK, but, but the, the actual ceremony, so, so you've played charades... So there would always be somebody who did... Uh, Papillon, there would always be somebody who did the taking of... We did the same... You know, it was ritualised, that stuff, and anyway... Oh, so, sorry, the, the same... You did the same films every year? Yeah, yeah, sort of... yeah. You're really into ceremonial, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we will now mime the taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3. <laughs> <laughs> How was it decided who'd lost at Shira? How did you do the scoring of Shira? It was Shira's? usually by the kind of tutting and sighing, the, the amount of tutting and sighing, uh, right. and also by the length of time it took to guess the four films that we did every year. OK. <laughs> <laughs> and what were the other two? Pa Papillon, oh, Taking of Pelham, Papillon, 1, 2, 3. The Taking of Pelham, 1, 2, 3. <laughs> yeah. The Sound of the Music and Towering Inferno. I've not seen The Sound of the Music. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's, that sounds less positive yeah. about the music. <laughs> the... the Sound of the Music is keeping everyone awake. <laughs> OK, so, uh, David's team. Kerry, what are you thinking? I, I, I think it's got to be a lie, hasn't it? Richard has a very honest face, doesn't he? You see, well, we can, it's interesting about Richard, because that clothing he's wearing, yeah. that only two sorts of people wear that, vicars and confidence tricksters. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know which one he is yet. Yeah. You think there's a difference? <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking, Harry? <laughs> Satire. I'm <Not> Satire. <laughs> I think because of the the hibernation problem, I think it has to be a lie. What about you, though, David? What I think, and what I always think, is it could be either. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, of course, it sounds unlikely, but at the same time, that's exactly the kind of true thing they would pick. 
Yes. If, he, if he just said, at Christmas, we would have mince pies. Yes. Then you go, well, that sounds true. Yes, true. What a merry show that would be. <laughs> but no, they've got to pick something that's either a lie or a true thing that might as well be a lie because it's so unlikely. <laughs> and it's finding that distinction <laughs> that apparently is the point of this section of my life. <laughs> Lie. We'll but say lie. Saying lie. Richard, truth or lie? It's a lie. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Richard didn't have his finger bitten by a tortoise if he lost it charades. Uh, Henry, you're next. My dear old thing, <laughs> if fans stop me in the street when I don't want to be disturbed, I will put on my common voice and pretend <laughs> I'm someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Henry. I think you should pretend you're at Lord's and I want you to give me a bit of commentary. In, in the common voice? In... Or the no, normal no, voice? No, 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 in his common voice. In the common voice, yes. Common My dear other thing, it's... it's, it's oh, that's the Australian voice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that, that'll do. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, no, go bless, that's, 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 where's, where's all, where's all, he's coming in from the pavilion end, go blimey, look at them strides, I'll tell you what, go, he bows and not boycott to boycott, he goes forward, go bless me. That's what, that's what I do when I, when I go off my long run. Also, West Country you are, now you are changing me. your accent throughout this. Where did you go before? then? You went down to the West Country all yeah. of a sudden. You didn't, you didn't tell me where I had to go, and I want to make all your audience feel happy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get all your voice training from Wurzel Gummidge? <laughs> when was the last time this happened, where well, you didn't want to be recognised? Well, I, I tell you when I don't want to break nice, when I'm eating. When I'm eating and drinking, having dinner. Well, in I your really own house. Want... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you are, well, we've met your lovely wife tonight, if she recognised you, surely she deserves some sort of <laughs> warmth from her husband. I allow her to recognise me on alternate Tuesdays and on bank holidays. <laughs> So you don't... No, of course not. She's wonderful and absolutely marvellous, and I wouldn't have a word said against her, and she's the best thing that ever happened to me. What, what? was the question? Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, wh when was the last time this happened? The last time when I was eating outside in a restaurant. When was this? Oh, um, two nights ago. OK, where were you? Uh, in uh, Penzance. Is that where you picked up the accent? Uh, <laughs> I had another one that night. Oh, what did you do yeah, then? I did a little bit of Welsh, I think. <laughs> I, had, I, had a very good, I had a very good friend. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> Henry, imagine that we're out, you're out in a restaurant now, you're having dinner with David Mitchell, what a treat. <laughs> and I've spotted you, OK? So, imagine you have your dinner, you and David, you're just eating away, yes. chatting, OK? Excuse me, I, I, uh, I don't mean to bother you. Sorry, David, I don't mean to bother you, but you're not that Henry Blofeld, the, the cricket commentator, are you? I, I, get, 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 would you come again, I think I didn't quite get you. Yes, you are, that's your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Go black. David Mitchell. I'll tell you I what. love the peep show. I really <laughs> not the later series, it dropped off a bit, but the early <laughs> stuff. Wonderful. Can I have a selfie? You don't mind, dear? Yeah? Darling, of course. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. And a friend told me you always put you on a different voice, but apparently you don't. <laughs> <laughs> So, what are you thinking, Lee's team? Uh, Clive, oh, does I, this strike you as true? I don't think it's true, because it, it was the flip-flopping between the accents that I thought was a little bit suspect. Richard, what about you? Well, in a very real sense, what is truth? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, no one's ever said that on this before. I think it's a farrago of falsehood and a tissue of lies. Should we say it's a lie? You're going to say lie? OK. Lie. Henry, was it the truth or was it a lie? It was a lie. Oh. Oh. 
Yes, it's a lie. Henry doesn't put on a common voice to avoid talking to fans. Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Matthew. <laughs> Richard, what is Matthew to you? This is Matthew. When we were nine years old, we co-founded an atheist's club. <laughs> Clive, what is Matthew to you? This is Matthew, and when he was filming me reporting on a rise in street crime, someone took his camera. And then finally, Lee, what is your relationship with Matthew? This is Matthew. I had to foot his dry cleaning bill after my fidget spinner landed in his soup. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. Is Matthew Richard's atheist ally, Clive's cameraless cameraman, or Lee's dirty diner? <laughs> David's team. Who would you like to start with? Richard. Yes. Atheists Club. Yes. Well, there's an obvious question, isn't there? <laughs> Um, at what point did you decide to lie about your atheism just to earn money from the Church of England? <laughs> Matthew and I were boy trebles, choristers together mm -hmm. uh, at prep school, and uh, we sang in the choir together, and at the age of nine, we formed the school chapel choir Atheists Club. Wow. As a protest against the blandishments of religion and as a refusal to submit to the mythical and tyrannical yep. deity forced upon Richard, us. Richard, Richard, it's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you had a lovely voice as well, because, you know, with, with the communards, yeah. you were lovely, weren't you? Well, that wasn't me singing in the... Have you ever words. interviewed yeah. a rock star before? <laughs> <laughs> with the communards, you were lovely, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Next week, Mick Jagger. <laughs> it was Is that all in stones, you were lovely, isn't it? <laughs> I don't believe that a nine-year-old would have bonked his Christmas stocking on the head like that. <laughs> well, that's a very interesting point. Did you still have a Christmas stocking? Well, I would suspend my atheism if there was any chance of personal <laughs> reward. <laughs> in... <laughs> OK, I, uh, I believe that. that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And, yet, and now you've done so with your whole career? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so at what point did you begin to doubt your doubts? At what point did I wake from the slumber of atheism? Yeah. Yes, exactly. That came or... along much later, when I was in my uh, late 20s, after a period of uh, turbulence in life, and I realised that uh, what I had acquired, unknowingly, uh, all those years ago in the choir, uh, was actually... I was good to go with it. And that was after the communards, a time at which, I will say, you were lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Was it just you and Matthew, or were there other non believers? No, there was uh, Porky Hamblin as well. Porky, Porky Hamblin? Hamblin. Yeah. Porky, Porky Hamblin sounds like a cartoon character yeah. that they used to advertise. You've been in the pies. Bino. He was only Were you real. brought up in an Enid Blyton? <laughs> <laughs> Porky, Porky Hamblin uh, was a barrister who became a Pilates teacher in Market Harborough. <laughs> Could you harmonise now together, you and Matthew? No, like, Matthew's, not allowed, Matthew's, Matthew's not, not allowed to sing. Matthew's not allowed to I've got a lovely voice, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to, to sing, we could. Sing, choirs of angels, sing in exultation... Oh, you, you did that. I went for that as well. I went for yeah, the desk. Yeah. <laughs> so, OK. What would be the atheist version of that? It would be a largely silent howl of punk rage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Who would you like to question next? Um, Clive, mm. you were filming a segment about street crime. Rising levels of street crime, yeah. And um, Matthew was filming me doing a piece to camera. And it often happens when you're in the middle of the street and, you know, things are going on and so forth. People are coming up behind you and mooning or they come up and doing this kind of thing while you're trying to do the piece to camera. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, this kid comes up behind and goes like this. I, of course, didn't see him do that, but Matthew saw that Definitely happen. a kid, not a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> he took one hand off the lens to say, get out of the shot. And someone <laughs> ran up behind him and just grabbed the camera off wow. him. Wow. The camera's quite big and heavy. Yeah, They're very. heavy, exactly. So he legged it with the camera, yeah. with uh, holding it by the handle, yeah. running like this. Yes. Me and Matthew legged it after him, and because they're quite heavy, 
Yeah. He couldn't continue that far, so he just dropped it. So you got the camera back, but presumably it was badly damaged. It was a bit knackered, yeah. Yes. But the film, the main thing was the film was intact. But a television camera, that's not a very useful yeah. thing for them to steal, is it? You flog it. It's pretty noticeable, isn't it? If you got, we've got this television camera. No, no, it's no. my granny's. You'd, you'd be... <laughs> You'd be surprised. What, do you, what you want is an iPhone or some cash, don't you? I mean, kids, nah. what you want nah, is an nah, iPhone nah. or some cash. <laughs> <laughs> can I touch Matthew's arms to feel oh. his muscles? Yes, you can. Because yeah. if yes. you're a cameraman, you yes. got to have guns. Yes. Right? Well, feel free. <laughs> okay. not, not, you bear like in mind. Not necessarily. A lot of, lot married, of guys wear fine. braces now. So. Bear in mind, Matthew's not allowed to speak. Right. So I none won't of, engage. None of your probing questions. Not gonna. Thank you. <laughs> Strong. <laughs> and the other one? <laughs> oh, oh. Wow. You work out. Does he? No, not a word. Yeah. Oh. I'll tell you what, I you wish I had look... dropped my fidget spinner in his suit. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have done it if I'd have known that. <laughs> OK, now, what about Lee? He's having soup and fidget spinners. Well, uh, what is a fidget spinner, yes. firstly? I Do you really not know? A fidget no. spinner is all the rage at the moment. You get them in different shapes and sizes and you spin it on your finger and it just spins oh, round. right. Lee, I've got one here. <laughs> if you want to... Uh... Yes? So, that is the fidget spinner. Uh, you place it on the finger and you and you basically just spin it round and it's quite relaxing. Where were you when you were fidgeting with this? We were in a restaurant, me and my friend. But if you're in a restaurant eating soup, surely yeah. you wouldn't be spinning things on your finger. Yeah. I did not say I was eating soup. Were you eating soup? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you seem very adept But with I didn't bats. say I was eating soup. No, because I, it landed I, I, in his soup. Okay. Describe the scene. You're in a restaurant. Who are you with? I'm with Eddie the Hat, who's a mate of mine. E Eddie the Hat. <laughs> Eddie the Hat. Is, it, is that a nickname or is he a hat? No, he's... <laughs> have, you, have you befriended a hat? He's, uh, no, he's Eddie the Hat because he's a nickname we have because, um... I don't care. Weirdly... <laughs> weirdly, he never wears hats. Now, so you're having uh, a meal with Eddie. Eddie the Hat! Where's Matthew? Matthew is sat, I would say, not a million miles away from the distance he is now, so a little bit nearer, so... At the next table? Well, if, yes. So you're having soup with one hand and... <laughs> you're doing this. ...using the Which spinner is... with the other, is that right? I'd had the last few mouthfuls, the bowl was still there, and then, as we all do, well, since I stopped smoking, I decided to have a quick spin. And you can still spin in a restaurant. <laughs> they haven't started the rule we have to spin outside. OK. <laughs> Did you feel, as you were eating the soup, a bit of spinning coming on? I did. I always do towards the end of a... Of a, of a particularly... Um, do you, after breakfast, do you spin with your every, cup of every coffee? Every opportunity to keep my... to keep... stop my hands feeling busy. It was something the therapist told me to do. I think it's to keep your hands busy is the expression, not <laughs> stop my hands feeling busy. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the words of a maniac. <laughs> It keeps my hands calm because I'm always right. wanting to do things okay. with my hands. Well, like at the moment, I want to punch David in the face. <laughs> <laughs> my fidgets, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so there you are. You're having a post soup spin. I'm having a little spin. What happens? So I'm spinning away, and Eddie the Hat's talking about things, you know. And he's quite impressed. He's going, "You can really spin that quite fast, can't you?" And I said, "Oh yeah." And I got a little bit carried away, and I really went for a massive one. It flew off. The spinner landed in the soup, and then an explosion of tomato soup went all over his shirt, his jacket, and his trousers. Wow. Um, what happened to the spinner? He took the spinner out like that. He was disgusted at me. He gave it back. I didn't help matters by going, "Yep, still working." <laughs> So, so, David's team, is Matthew Richard's atheist ally, Clive's cameraless cameraman, or could it be Lee's dirty diner? Well, he, he, he's got strong arms, he's wiry, he could be a cameraman. He looks like, he looks a, cameraman. like a cameraman. He could really. also, of course, eat in a restaurant, mm. because anyone can. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> and he looks about the right age to have been at school with Richard. Do you see the problem? <laughs> <laughs> I would say Clive. And do you think...? I think Clive... Yep, he's you a cameraman. Think like, well, Defo. I think it's Richard. Ooh. What? Ooh. Yeah. It sounds to me like the truth is somewhere between Clive and Richard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to overrule. We'll say Clive. Thank you. OK, they're saying that it's Clive. Matthew, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Matthew, and Richard and I did start an atheist club. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Matthew is Richard's atheist ally. Thank you very much, Matthew. Thank you.
Which brings us to our final round, Quick Fire Lies. And we start with... <coughs> it's Kerry. Oh! Right, OK. <clears throat> right, after a flu virus swept through my class, I starred in a primary school production of Snow White and the Two Dwarfs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm presuming one of them was Sneezy. <laughs> <laughs> what did you play? I played Snow White. Ah, yes. and which of the two dwarfs appeared? Uh, <laughs> happy yeah. and grumpy. And which of the five didn't? <laughs> <laughs> Sleepy. Yes. Snoozy. Snoozy, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sleepy, snoozy, <laughs> can't wake up, <laughs> The seven rules. There's happy, happy, there's happy, doc, doc, doc. grumpy, sleepy, Barry, you play Robbie, happy. and Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Did no one suggest cancelling? No, because originally the thing is, I was one of the dwarfs. I was. Oh, you sneezy. got promoted? Yeah, so I was adamant. I was like, come on, this is my chance. Well, I had much, one show. How much notice did they give you? <sighs> they gave me one day. One day? You learnt all the lines in a day? I knew the lines. <laughs> <laughs> she was sneezing in rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> she could have been feeling grumpy, that would have been worse. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Is she telling the truth? Um, I'm loving this. I'm loving this yeah. show. I desperately want to see it. But I'm allowing that to cloud my judgement, cos I think it's not true. Clive, what do you think? It doesn't sound plausible to me at all. No? Lie? Lie. 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 Tim says lie. It's a lie. It's a okay, lie. Kerry, were yes. you telling the truth? Or was it all a lie? <sighs> My life is a house of lies. <laughs> 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 yes, it's a lie. Kerry didn't star in a school production of Snow White and the Two Dwarves. Next. <clears throat> it's a Henry. <laughs> <laughs> After a mix-up on the telephone, I accidentally went on holiday with the wrong girl. At least he. Is this recently? Uh, not recently, but um, near enough to be slightly embarrassing. OK. It was early 1979. Early 1979. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fairly recently, is it? Blimey. <laughs> I'm glad this story wasn't a long time ago. It would have been in the 1640s. <laughs> <laughs> so, who did you think you were phoning? Um, that's none of your business. But, okay. uh... <laughs> were you going out with her at the time? Was she your girlfriend? Was she a sort of on...? She was a lady I had met in Sydney. What was the circumstance that meant that you ended up meeting this lady? Well, I mean, if you're in another country like Australia for, 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 nearly, for five months or nearly five months, there's always a chance you're going to meet a lady or two, isn't there? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, I want to know, at any point during the phone call, did you realise you were speaking to the wrong woman? No. You never realised? It was quite late at night, um, I have to admit, and I probably had... <laughs> Uh, a thimble or two of, of wine, so right. I wasn't actually into the business of dissecting voices. And the reason you were calling was to say, come on holiday with me. Well, it was more specific than that, actually. It was to say, would you like to come and spend three or four days with me the weekend after next in Monte Carlo? Oh! Wow. Wow. I say yes. <laughs> so this girl that's answered, have you ever met this other girl, the one that you're now phoning? Yes. Who was this girl? I pr another sort it's of... not a matter I'm prepared to discuss right. with an almost total stranger. Got you. Right. <laughs> so, just to clarify, you're sleeping with both of these women. <laughs> Can I ask, if, is that a question or a statement? It's definitely a statement. We a all statement. Know. We're all reading In which case, the I can ignore it. Exactly. <laughs> yes. You've got this other woman's phone number. Now, you've phoned her up. Woman number two answers the phone. How long does the conversation go on where you think it's woman number one? Oh, it went on for seven or eight minutes. OK. So when you put the phone down, you believe that you have now arranged a holiday with what you think is woman number one. Is that correct? You're getting better and better at Right. This. <laughs> now, when is the next time you speak to woman number two? I went, in fact, ten days later to Heathrow, and you know how it takes you get there and you meet someone. I'm sure uh, everyone here will understand exactly what I'm saying. And you think three people come through and you wait forever and you look at the wretched board that says the thing has landed. And you wait and wait and wait and no-one came at all. 
no tall, voluptuous blonde. I couldn't see anything like that. <laughs> and then I did see a rather... I don't mean the word dumpy in an uncomfortable way. <laughs> oh. Um, maybe that's like the wrong word. Uh, brunette there, and I said she walked through. No, sorry, dope is the wrong word. I meant brunette. <laughs> that's not going to wash. <laughs> and she walked through, and I suddenly thought there was something vaguely familiar about her. And she looked up and looked at me and, and recognised me. And I said to her, my, my, my dear old thing, what on earth are you doing here? Oh, no! <laughs> and she said, what are you doing here? I'm supposed to be meeting Geoffrey Boycott. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what are you, my dear old thing, what on earth are you doing here? And she said to me, don't you remember <laughs> ringing up and asking me to come to Monte Carlo <gasps> for the weekend? Oh, oh, no! And you know what was so awful? God. Was that I couldn't remember her name. <laughs> <laughs> and so what I did was I ran towards her to pick up her baggage. Not in order to <laughs> be altruistic and help her, but in order to read her name on her <laughs> label. <laughs> Henry, I just wondered, how was the weekend? Um, interesting. Um, <laughs> interesting. It, it wasn't what I would call a, a Grand Prix weekend, exactly. <laughs> we had one or two rather... Sort of in unenforced pit stops. <laughs> so, yes. what do you think, Lee? Well, wow, this is an amazing. I hope it's true. So the Monte Carlo rings true for someone like that. Oh, him. definitely, yeah, yeah. Well, look at his yeah. jacket. I would have said Butlins. <laughs> <laughs> What are, we, what are we going to say? Ooh, I think it's Lord. true. I, I, think it's true. I, yeah, I think well, we I'll, it too. I, I think it's a lie, but I want it to be true, so I'm right. going to say true. All right, you're going to say it's true. Henry, was it true or were you telling a lie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so oh. excited. It was true. Yeah! <laughs> Yes, it's true. Henry did go on holiday with the wrong girl. <laughs> that noise signals time is up. It's the end of the show. And I can reveal that Lee's team have won by four points to one. Yay! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Good night. Lee Mac is back with more festive laughs in the Not Going Out Christmas special. Catch that here on BBC One Christmas Eve at 9.35. Now back on BBC Two right now, we return to Royston Daisy with the League of Gentlemen in the first of three new episodes.